So first of all, my question is, how did you yourself get into crypto? Mm. That's an interesting story. I think it was now around maybe two, two and a half years ago that a colleague of mine in my previous job just told me about this whole new technology that's out there and that he actually he invested into some coins back in the days and then he started doing some research about the, the, the potential behind it and he introduced me to it. So it was I think two, two and a half years ago almost and it happened basically over lunch break in our canteen, my previous job and we spoke and spoke and spoke and we spoke I think for like two and a half hours and I think I missed two meetings <laughs> at that time. <laughs> okay. But but it was then that you know he started to really uh, infect me with that kind of virus so sort of start his interest and then I what first thing that I did, because I myself am more like a cautious person, so I did a lot of research about the whole idea behind the technology behind it, where could I invest, what platforms are out there, is it risky or not, because it was a complete black box until then. And um, yeah, and since then I've been very, very engaged and actively trading also in the industry myself. And it um, was the right decision for me back then to listen to my colleague really? and to, to get into it. So, uh, did you invest into crypto no. back then or any other time? Like no, it, it did, I did not invest on the day, obviously, because as I said, I myself, I'm a little bit more like, I like to do a lot of research before I do anything. So, about like one or two weeks after, I started investing into various platforms, some assets, um, just to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Make my first experience, had my first little crashes, had my first <laughs> breakdown, and so I thought I lost some money. <laughs> but this is how you learn, this is part of the learning curve. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but then you joined Kraken, right? Yes. Uh, why and how did you join mm -hmm. Kraken? Well, the how was quite easy. Uh, I was looking for a job opportunity in that field. In, in the cryptocurrency? In the cryptocurrency industry. And I was a private user of Kraken. I know the quality of their product, the high level of customer service that they do. Oh, cool. And yeah, I found this opening on their website. Yeah. So it's quite easy, actually, quite simple. There's no <laughs> bit, of, bit of better story behind that. Um, and I wanted to change in the industry because I myself have a banking background. I was working in a mobile bank here in Amsterdam. And I wanted to change into this whole crypto space because I saw, of course, the challenges that these people in this industry faced. The whole fact that it still was an undiscovered market and unclaimed territory is still. No, not, not every market share is taken already, so there's a lot of opportunity there in that market. It was like a little bit like, it is still like a huge adventure yeah. also yeah, because there's so little regulations or so many things that can still happen, happen so fast. Um, that's, it's, it was, those were the attracting factors for me to go into this industry. So my next question is, like, it, but obviously you already answered, yeah. is it difficult to be a crypto exchange? I don't like using the word difficult because difficult sure. is that if you, if you have a bad job and you have five kids that you have to put on your own, <laughs> okay, that's difficult. That, okay. um, yeah. But for us it's a challenging world. Challenging. That's also for me personally of course why I joined Kraken. It's a challenging world because you're dealing, as I said, with a completely new industry, a completely unregulated market still, oh, de facto, yeah. to 99%. Um, a market where, um, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe have half a percent of the active traders are currently in the market. I think the really huge majority of people are still holding out to get into. Mm -hmm. And now it's part of, of companies like ours, like Kraken, to actually build the trust, to educate people also about the product and the potential behind that, and to thereby actually generate trust and that people are willing to step into the industry because, let's be honest, there are a lot of scams out there, there are a lot of black sheeps out there, and it's for, for companies with a good reputation and with decent companies like ours, that's part of their job to also not do the platform, but really take people by the hand and give them like an entrance into this world. And this is, this is um, part of our job and also part of that everyone in our company feels like is part of our mission statement also. And can you speak about what your trading volume is? Do you know the numbers? Myself or for Kraken in general? Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, obviously, if you, if you check out certain websites, you have hundreds of millions on a daily basis that are going back and forth. Um, it's still obviously currently more of a, of a karma period. If you think back about this crazy, crazy months we had uh, a few months ago, it was crazy. Um, but this is actually good. It's good that right now we still have a lot of activity, a lot of new users every day. Um, but it gives us some breathing time still to, you know, get up to our growth to onboard new people, yeah. to train new staff, because the people on our end that are in our customer service department, our account management, those people, they deal in the end with people's money. So they need to be properly educated, properly trained in order to handle this responsibility. It's not for everyone. And we do not want to expose any of our users, regardless if he or she has one euro or one million euro on the platform, to someone on our end that is not properly trained and educated. So we're using this time right now to really bring people up to speed 
to train them, educate them, so that they can then in the end yeah, deliver the best service. Well, there are users. so many crypto exchanges yeah. appearing and entering the market every yeah. single day. Do you consider them competitors? No, oh, well, obviously, as I mentioned, the blockchain industry is incredibly fast moving. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are new crypto exchanges out there, as you mentioned, like uh, quite quickly, especially yeah. crypto to crypto exchanges only. Mm -hmm. um, we do not perceive them necessarily as a, as a close mm -hmm. uh, competitor of ours because we are a crypto to fiat exchange. And with mm -hmm. that, it comes an additional level of responsibility. Um, we have been in the market for several years now. If you look at the total market cap of exchanges now, we've always been in the top 10 for a long period of time now. Mm -hmm which in other industries would equal to maybe 50, 60, 70 years, right? <laughs> Feels like it, at least. And um, yeah, we look, of course, what our exchanges do. A lot of, some of them are doing a great job, I have to say that, and, um, but we primarily focus on ourselves. We know our strengths, we want to deliver, we want to compete de facto on quality service, on stability, reliability, security, mm -hmm. and this is something that we compete on. And the, the people that we compete on most with is probably ourselves. Because, um, as you know, we are a growing exchange, growing company, and um, for us it's very, very crucial that you know, we keep our quality high. What do you think about decentralized exchanges? Well, it's definitely a very interesting uh, concept. I definitely get the appeal behind that idea. Mm -hmm. um, to be quite frank, I myself have not yet made up my mind on it. I need to see a little bit more details and a bit more experience about mm -hmm. it, a little bit more proof about it, before I can make any assessment on that. So I would not feel welcome to make an assessment sure. now. Mm -hmm. But do you think they, should, they can replace centralized mm. exchanges? Well, I don't think ex any replacement will happen. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in the midterm there might be a, an additional tool for certain types of investors. Mm -hmm. However, given the fact that, that we are a centralized exchange, uh, we have one order book, that we have our, our banking and financial institution um, partnerships. This is something that generates a lot of trust with our users. And this is something that especially this industry needs more than others. Mm -hmm. Trust, reliability. And um, so as I said, definitely interesting concept, definite idea. And I have not yet made up my mind on that. Uh, probably needs a few more years also, needs to see more white papers, more tests, etc., on how things really would work out. Um, but as of now, it's, um, we know who we are, we know what we do best, and we know that we have still untapped maybe half a percent of the whole potential. So you mentioned that you joined in December 2017, That's exactly. right? How many clients did you get since that time? I do know, of course, the numbers. Um, it's obviously, if you take it, our, our, if you look at our trading volume, um, you see that it has exploded over the last few months, especially in the, let's call it, hot phase that we had in the last winter. Okay. Got more and more mainstream, you yes. had like this big, I call them old school newspapers that don't really know what they're talking about, but they heard about crypto, they didn't want to miss out. Yeah. And they started writing um, borderline true or not true articles about a lot of things. <laughs> and uh, this obviously fueled, the, fueled the, um, the growth, right? But as I said, still, I still don't see that we are near, nowhere near market adaption or mass market adaption. It is growing, but it's not yet. We're no, no. not there yet. The way we see it, it's still that we are somewhere in the, if you want, take the traditional adoption cycles of new products, uh, services. Uh, we see it more that we are in the early adopter phase, uh, in the innovator phase, where we still have people that, you know, they're tech savvy, that maybe don't even have an established banking relationship. You know, for them, banking is just a means to do something, yeah. to have money on their wallet and send it around. That um, people that grew up with the internet, with the whole idea of, free information and freedom of choice that they start adapting us, using us, but that a lot of the, the so older investors or the older institutions also, they're still, for obvious reasons, a little bit more reluctant mm -hmm. to enter the market because they made some bad experience in the past, they don't really understand the concept, they don't really see maybe the potential in it, they don't understand it, so they're afraid of it. So that's yeah. where part of our job comes in again, to educate them a little bit in the sense that it's a legit investment type, you can benefit from it. it. Not everything is a scam. The legit projects are out there. You know, it's it's really yeah. part of. It always boils down to taking people's fear of something. Mm -hmm. because fear of unknown. In this fear case. of the unknown. Exactly. You always. It's always the same case. If it's money or something. Something that you do not know, do not understand. You fear more than something you understand. And especially with, in the end, we are dealing with people's money. Mm -hmm. This is probably the next to health, maybe the most sensitive topic yes. area you could touch. And that's why it's very important for us also as a company to, to be aware of that, to understand that. And to, you know, do not expect anyone to think like us. Mm -hmm. So for us it's very important to understand why certain people think in a certain way, why institutions might not be that interested yet. And you know, try our best and of course to bring them on board. And we have to be aware that it's, it's an uphill battle and it takes time, right? 
when do you think, in your opinion, when mm. can we say that mass adaption has been achieved? So what should happen? Mm. Like uh, major trading desks uh, launched in uh, yeah. JP Morgan and stuff. So yeah. what uh, would be the sign? I mean, obviously, it's very difficult to predict anything in this industry, right? If I look at the development in the last five years, six months, um, what's on the regulatory side, it's, it's an insane speed that happens. Um, so I would not feel comfortable making an exact prediction mm -hmm. because yes, I can't. And if someone, yeah, sure. if, if someone says he, he or she can, then I would like to meet that person yeah, and, and I might talk, like talk to, to, like to that person yeah. because okay. I'm very interested in their opinion. So as you said, mass market adoption has several, several um, how do you say it, aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously from a trading aspect, um, there should be more bigger fish maybe that invest, more, but also more retail users, right? Because right now if you go out, you have um, a lot of people that still have their money, let's say, in some some saving account or something like this that generates maybe I don't know, half a percent interest or something like this. And as long as these people, you know, don't change their mind and come to the crypto side of things, you might not be able to call it a mass market adoption in a classical sense. Yeah. Because if you look at the classical investment product, for instance, um, funds, you name it, they are all to some certain at least mass market adopted, meaning that a lot of people invest in it. Some people might not even know it because they tell their bank to invest into certain yeah. things and they have no idea what they invest in, but they do it de facto, right? And so for us, it's um, now also part of this, this learning process though, that uh, you know, we need to, <laughs> need to get more of these, these um, institutional investors in order to push those products also through to their um, clients in the end. So I don't know there, if there will be like a certain threshold that you can say, you know, now it's mass market or anything, yeah. and if it's not mass market, but there's definitely a lot of ground still to cover. And um, yeah, a lot of education that needs to be done. Oh, because, definitely. I mean, that's, that's, that's uh, what I said, and that's what you guys obviously know better than I do, that if you take the traditional media, and also take it to its called traditional financial media, some of them doing great, excellent journalistic work, some of them don't. Some of them, they write articles that are just factually not true. Mm -hmm. And thereby, of course, um, yeah, hindering this whole mass adoption. So by educating, you also mean giving the, stri the facts straight, right? So not yeah. only explaining, but reporting. No. Exactly. I mean, for us as an exchange also, as I said, we're dealing with people's money. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's very important that we open direct discussion about anything. And let's be real, there are black sheep in this industry. Well, there are scams in this industry. We should never, ever forget about it. We should never try to cover it up. Mm -hmm. But then again, this is part of every new industry to some bigger or smaller extent. It's just that this industry is so quickly fast moving that it seems like a lot, but you have black sheep everywhere. We should never cover this up. We should be aware, we should educate people that might not be investing in crypto now in the risks of it. Do your own research, be aware that it is a risk, risk investment to some extent. And that's also it's part of our job, but it's also part of media, like yours for instance, to, to report about this and uh, to yeah, be de facto a certain educator in that market. Because let's be honest, if not you or us or some other players in the industry, who's doing it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? I don't see a lot of um, schools or universities starting, or you have to start in schools. We are from um, primary school, high school, high school probably, to, to educate people about these things. Now, yeah? uh, I don't see that happening uh, anytime soon. It doesn't even happen necessarily with, with traditional investment products. Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So they need to get their information from somewhere. Yeah. Right? And this is part of our job also to educate our clients, to help them. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not an education company, we're an exchange. The fact is our core business, but we do it because it's part of our mission statement and part of, of let's say, crypto-specific news, like you, for instance, or news in general. You just speak to people, learn about it before you write an article. It should be journalism one right? Yeah, right. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> At the end of the interview, we would like to ask you, as being a part of, of, yeah. of this industry and being an exchange, yeah. a couple of funny or useful tips for I mean, there are a couple of, of useful tips yeah. that you can probably adapt to, to other parts of life as well. I mean, always obviously start, do your own research. If someone tells you, hey, this new product is great, even though that person might have the best intention, might be your friend or family member, that's great, but do your own research. Read about it, see who the owners are, the team of it. What, if you can, read the white paper, understand it, and just try to get a feeling for it. That's one part. Then be aware that it is an investment, which means investment, especially our industry, is also subject to a certain level of volatility. Yes. Which means the. the, the <laughs> I mean, yeah, certain. <laughs> I mean, obviously, so okay. we know that the price might, uh, most likely, will go down at some point just to yeah. go up again. So be aware of that, that this will happen to you. Be aware prepare of... Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. <laughs> that should they hold? That, during, that's that's, that's really the, up to every okay. single individual. I will never tell you what to do. It's Fair up to enough. you. Yeah. Um, you have to be aware that the price will fluctuate. 
but you will never lose money until you hit the trade button eh, for a price that's lower than when you bought it. So you have to be aware of it. Just try to stay calm in those periods. Do something. Do yourself a favor and don't maybe necessarily look at the price every day because it just makes you crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, I mean, obviously, don't invest all your money in it. Be smart about it. Diversify, not within crypto itself, but as I said, real estate if you want to invest or just keep it on your bank if you want to spend some money on something else. Um, this is just advice for my, that I can give. And this is something um, I think personally, I'm pretty sure you will find a lot of other people out there that might have different opinions. It's just sure. me personally. Um, but in the end, you have to keep yourself true to certain values and also to who you are. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.